What's up everybody, welcome to John's Daily Hub. So here is my 2021 lawn care setup. Now as you guys know, this is for a solo lawn care setup. So my 2021 lawn care and solo lawn care setup. I apologize, I have to have the door closed because there's just too much sun out there and it's blinding everything. I'm gonna start with all my hand tools and then we'll work our way up to the big boy. Starting right off the bat with our trimmers. As you guys remember, I had the Echo PAS 225 trimmer and that's the trimmer I got going right after that was my first I guess commercial grade trimmer I guess you can say because before I had just a little residential curve shaft is actually how I got started so this was my first actual purchase its main use this year it was my main trimmer I'm going to keep the string trimmer attachment as a backup or a secondary trimmer and this is pretty much going to be my main edger as you guys know I really like to run the blade edger I just think it gives a more of a crisp look of edges I really prefer to run that as opposed to just using the string to do the edge so this would be nice if I ever tackle any kind of bigger job or anything like that or I need two at least two trimmers running I'll have two trimmers plus this will be good as it'll be a nice backup trimmer just in case something happens to this one now moving on to this one this is the echo 225i and it's the srm 225 and the i is basically easy start you guys can check that video out right there on how easy it does start. here's the thing with that i don't really need that much power when it comes to string trimming and stuff i don't do big thick brush i've maybe done two jobs that i really wished i had more power plus maybe a drainage ditch here and there that got overgrown i wish i had a little bit more power Power, but for the most part I don't need that more power but here's the main reason why I bought both of these the reason why I bought both of the 225s is because of the weight they're significantly lighter than their next size is up and believe it or not but just the SRM 225 is about a pound maybe half a pound to a pound lighter than the PAS 225 I believe just because of this piece right here really makes that much of a difference at least half a pound to a pound might not be quite exactly that much as you guys remember I did a lot of apartment complexes and I mowed a lot of larger places that needed a lot of trimming you're talking hours each time I go there when you're holding a trimmer for hours even half a pound will make so much more of a difference when it comes to weight and holding it and fatigue and just being worn out at the end of the day now for this year, if I do get into any brush cutting jobs, which I have one coming soon, it'll be cutting some four-wheeler trails, I did get the blade attachment, and it actually just bolts right onto the end of it. You take the head off, and this piece goes onto it. You guys will probably see a video on this later. It'll eventually happen. Right after the season warms up, I plan on getting out there and doing that job. Using that, I really don't need that much power. I would like to eventually try out other trimmers, like Husqvarna, Still especially. Still, I think, will probably be the next trimmer I do try. Over the course of the next few years, just so I have the experience with it, just so I can say, hey, I really like that trimmer, or no, I don't like that trimmer. Maybe even find things that I like about all of them and maybe make like a Frankenstein trimmer. That'd probably be kind of cool. So moving on to the blowers. My main blower that I'm going to be running for just pretty much all the residentials that I do is going to be this right here. It is the Echo PB2520, as you guys can see right there. This one's nice. It's easy start and it's very light as I can carry it around. I can even ride my mower and hold this out in front of me and blow it. It's pretty light and it's pretty decent fuel efficient. It's got some decent power to it. This is all I really need for just blowing grass trimmings and stuff like that out. And it really helps blowing out flower beds and stuff when I get up close to houses as opposed to running my backpack blower. And for the price, you really can't beat it. Moving on to this beast. This is only the PB770T as you guys can see there. I absolutely love this blower. Sure, it's not the most powerfulest blower out there on the market nowadays, but it's done me very well. It does great for leaf cleanups. It does great for carrying it when I'm doing like large apartment complexes instead of holding that for, you know, an hour to an hour and a half at one shot. I could just throw that on my back way better. I do plan on by the end of this year, by the end of the season come fall time, I do plan on upgrading that backpack blower and more likely going with say the PB9010 or whatever the latest, greatest, biggest, baddest leaf blower is just because I really want one and I do do a lot of leaf cleanups as well as you guys may have seen I use it for the snow too so whatever the biggest, baddest one is, if there's a new one out by the time I go to buy it, I'll probably buy that one. I still will keep this one just as a secondary blower to run or even a backup backpack blower. It's pretty nice. In terms of my hand equipment, you guys know I've already got rakes and a dethatch rake and shovels and everything pretty much needed right there. But in terms of chainsaws, I just run a little MS-170. That thing is almost brand new. I've used it a couple of times, but I've already made my monies back on it. For the price, I got that on sale for 150 bucks, brand new. I don't really need anything bigger than that or stronger than that for the little bit of trimming that I do. And then for any hedge trimmings that I do or hedge cutting, I I use the Toro hedge trimmer here, and this is the 40 volt version. I absolutely love this thing. I've cut way bigger stuff than you're supposed to with this. 
And for anything that's way overhead, I do still have the attachment that I put on the end of a trimmer, which, hey, I do have this trimmer too, but I don't think I'll be keeping that much longer. But anyways, it's nice to have. I can put that on pretty much anything I want. I do plan on getting one of those hedge trimmer attachments for the PAS system, the actual one that's made by Echo. I do believe that's a better attachment than running that cheap trimmer plus one. You guys can check that video out. So moving on to the mowers. As you guys know, this was the very first mower I ever bought. It's a little Craftsman 22 inch push mower and it is the Platinum Edition. As you guys can see there with the 6.7 horsepower Briggs engine. And it's mulching, side discharge, or bagging as you can see. And I actually really love this mower. It is self-propelled and it actually leaves a really good cut. And when it comes to mulching leaves or bagging it, whatever I want to do, this does a great job with it. Now, just something to know about me is I really don't want to have to use this. If I have to use it, I'm probably not liking that property too much. But if I have to, it's nice to have it. Now, I am looking at replacing this one this year, as you guys may know, with another push mower. As of right now, I do believe I'm going to go with the Toro 30-inch mower, but we'll see. I'm going to wait until the season gets going a little bit, and I see what I really do need. Because if I don't need to use a push mower that much, I might just stick with that one for this year. I'm moving to my secondary mower. This is the Bobcat Walk Behind. It's belt-driven. It's the old pistol grip. I believe this is the 2007-2008 model, so it's the older one. Now, if you guys know me, I absolutely hate using this one for obvious reasons. Of course, I guess it's better than push mowing, right? Now, this one does have the 14 horsepower Kawasaki motor on it. I absolutely love this. It's a love-hate. I hate using it, but it's a beast of a mower. It's an older mower. It's harder to find parts for. It's getting a little worn out here and there, but, but I mean, this thing still fires up second pull every time. Now, it's 48 inches. This thing is a tank. It, I have cut some very thick stuff, and it actually leaves a very clean cut when you're done with it. Just as clean as my Xmark does. Originally, this mower was bought for cutting slopes, as the old zero turn that I had wasn't able to cut slopes, but this one could. So that one could cut just as good of a slope as I can with that. But this is still nice if it gets too steep of a slope, or if there's any bit of dampness, or there's wet, like doing retention ponds, or next to retention ponds, or drainage ditches. This one's nice to have because you won't get stuck like you will on a zero turn. And this one's a lot lighter to get out than it is a zero turn if you do get stuck. Now its main purpose this year, I do believe it's going to serve as a pretty much a backup mower just in case something happens to this one. So let's move on to this one. So this is the main money maker of my business. This is my main mower I run. This is the Xmark Radius and it is the X series and it's a 60 inch deck. Now, I absolutely love this mower. This is a beast of a mower. It is definitely a tank. I did get the operator-controlled shoot blocker by Xmark with it, which, as you guys know, I'm hoping to replace that this season with a different brand, like an aftermarket brand, like Quick Shoot or whatever the other brands are. I may try that instead of this one because I don't really care for this one too much. Now, this one's got the, I think it's 22 horsepower or 24 horsepower Kawasaki motor on it. I don't remember the exact specs on it, but either way, it's a great motor. I've cut a lot of stuff with this. Now, as you guys can see, it's already got right at 200 hours on it, just shy of it. Which I don't believe you guys have seen the 200 hour review of this yet, but it will be coming out shortly. Now, I have been running this one as my main mower, but the one complaint I do have with it is it's freaking huge. You know, 60 inches, in my opinion, is just a little too big to be putting on your everyday yards. I really think 48 inch to 52 inch is like the ideal size for your regular average everyday yard. Just because this mower will scalp certain yards, depending on what kind and what shape they're in, just because of how big it is. Now this season just might be judgment season for this mower here to determine how long I'm really going to keep this mower. I'd really like to be able to get like a 44 inch mower to run as my main mower. And I would also like to keep this one. My ideal setup, I'd have a 44 inch mower as the main mower and have this one for the larger properties. But we'll see after this year. You guys know last season I did a lot of large properties. This season we'll see how many I do and then going into the next season we'll see if I continue to do it. I do like mowing larger properties, but you know, we just, we'll see what happens. But for now this year we'll just deal with what we've got. I think it's a great setup. It's definitely efficient and it'll get the job done. You know, we can worry about upgrading stuff as the year goes or as the next season goes and everything as well. Now if it comes to bagging, I do have my accelerator grass catcher which does work. Sorry about that. On both of these mowers, both the Bobcat and the X Mark, it does work. Now, I don't entirely like using that because it fills up fast and it does get heavy, but it's a lot cheaper than buying the grass catcher for the X Mark. 
And of course, I also still have the cyclone rake that I'm going to be using mainly for if I do a big dethatching job or I do any kind of big leaf cleanup, I do still use the cyclone rake for now. Another future upgrade is I do plan on getting one of those powered shoot or powered grass catchers for the X Mark. I'd still like to try to build one, but we'll see what happens throughout this year if I even can build one that actually works right for it. Because as you guys know, they're pretty expensive. I think they're what, $2,500, I think, something like that. The grass catcher for it made by X Mark. I think that's how much they cost. Uh, even aftermarket versions of it are pretty expensive. In terms of the trailer that I have, I still just have my little 12 foot utility trailer, so there's nothing special there. I do plan on upgrading that this year, hopefully to an enclosed trailer setup, but we'll see. Because as you guys know, like I keep saying all the time, is I did kind of restart my business a little bit. So I'm just trying to see how I really do this year before I really make any big investment like that. But I do plan on going full enclosed trailer setup. There you guys got to see my 2021 lawn care setup. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think of all this. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to smash that like button. And as always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.